The Elves and the Shoemaker by Paul Galdon Based on Lucy Crane's translation from the German of Brothers Grimm There once was a shoemaker who, through no fault of his own, became so poor that at last he had nothing left but just enough leather to make one pair of shoes. He cut out the shoes at night so he could set to work on them the next morning. Because he had a good conscience, the shoemaker laid himself down in his bed and fell asleep at once. In the morning, after he had said his prayers, the shoemaker went to his workshop. There he found a pair of shoes made and finished and standing on his table. He was very much astonished and could not tell what to think. He took the shoes in his hand to examine them more carefully. They were so well made that every stitch was in the right place, just as if they had come from the hand of a master workman. Soon a customer entered, and as the shoes fitted him very well, he paid more than the usual price for them. Now the shoemaker had enough money to buy leather for two more pairs of shoes. He cut them out at night and intended to set to work the next morning with fresh spirit. But that was not meant to be, for when he got up, they were already finished. A customer soon bought them and gave the shoemaker so much money that he was able to buy enough leather for four more pairs. Early the next morning, he found the four pairs finished also, and so it always happened. Whatever the shoemaker cut out in the evening was finished by the morning, and soon he was making a very good living. One night, not long before Christmas, when the shoemaker had finished cutting out the shoes from the leather, he turned to his wife before he went to bed and said, How would it be if we were to stay up tonight and see who it is that does us this service? His wife agreed and set a candle to burn. Then they both hid in a corner of the room behind some coats that were hanging up. They peeked out between the coats and began to watch. As soon as it was midnight, in came two neatly formed naked little elves. They seated themselves on the shoemaker's table, took up the work that was already prepared, and began to stitch, pierce, and hammer the leather. The elves worked so cleverly and quickly with their little fingers that the shoemaker's eyes could scarcely follow them. So full of wonder was he. The elves never stopped until all the shoes were finished and were standing ready on the table. Then they jumped up and ran off. The next morning, the shoemaker's wife said to her husband, Those elves have made us rich, and we ought to show them how grateful we are. With all their running about and nothing to cover them, they must be very cold. She smiled. I'll tell you what, I will make little shirts, coats, waistcoats and breeches for them, and knit each of them a pair of stockings, and you shall make them each a pair of shoes. The husband consented willingly, and that night, when everything was finished, they laid the gifts on the table instead of the cat out leather. Then they hid themselves so they could observe how the elves behaved when they saw their presence. stroke of midnight, the elves rushed in, ready to set to work. But when they found the neat little clothes made just for them, they stood a moment in surprise, and then they showed the greatest delight. Quickly, they took up their pretty garments and slipped them on, singing, What spruce and dandy boys we are, no longer cobblers we will be. They hopped and danced about, jumping over the chairs and tables, and at last they danced out the door. From that time on, the elves were never seen again, but the shoemaker and his wife prospered 
as long as they lived.